Hello, Rodeo fans. We are officially into Cowboy Christmas, and I want to welcome you all to the first episode of the short round half point, as duly noted by my co-host there, Clay Creasy. But um, yeah, we're 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 in the thick of rodeo season. We got lots of stuff to keep up with, and we we thought we just can't summarize all of the action that happens in one episode of the podcast. So as we move through June, July, and August, we'll be dropping in every week here with a quick recap of the, the weekend that was and a quick little preview of the weekend that's coming up just so <laughs> we don't have to bombard you with information during each new podcast episode and we can kind of keep up to date with with what's been happening on the road so we got a big weekend to wrap up here clay uh with indisville sundry uh and the wildwood bronc match wrapping up but i think we could i guess we already did touch on the the gunners bronc battle but anyways three big rodeos three big events happening and as we head into a weekend where we got sundry uh Wainwright, High River, and Bassano all on the same weekend. It's just gonna be be an all, all out, all out pace from now until after, well, I guess now until the end of the rodeo season. So yeah, this will be kind of our half point check-in each week as we move through Cowboy Christmas here. Yeah, for sure. I think it it's yeah, like we've we've said, it's it's getting to be real hard to summarize two weekends of rodeo up. <laughs> and then try to preview two more weekends of rodeo. So this just gives us a good way to to get through that but yeah so like before before we jump into the, to the action here i just want to make a note i know some people are probably already already noticing that there's a, a new canadian professional rodeo association uh website rolling out slowly here over the next little while um it's it's a new project it's something new that we're dropping we're really excited about it here at the cpra um there's obviously going to be growing pains with the new website so we just ask you all be patient. We hear the feedback. If something that you that is not working the way it should be, we will be working on getting it fixed as soon as we can. But we just want everybody to know that we are working on it. We'll have it. We'll have it done. But it's going to be really awesome to have a new new website to share with you all. But anyways, Clay, let's jump into the action. So I think we the best place for us to start, which is going to be the Wildwood Bronc Bust and the kind of the original Bronc match um, that we that we have started by the Hay family and talk about a, a weekend full of fireworks up in Wildwood. Yeah, the you you just can't beat as a bronc rider getting a chance to to ride in Wildwood with all the history of the Hay family. I mean, it all started with with Fred, mm-hmm. uh, Rod and Danny's dad. I mean, Fred's just was a, a great bronc rider in his day, and obviously the boys took after him. And and now we see Rod's boys are are just making their imprint on it and. And Logan again, he he hasn't maybe had as much of a a strong start to the year as he wanted, but he definitely put a stamp on this. And and my my favorite part of the whole thing was Wildwood had their little showcases of a few of the the past champions or or just people they thought that were gonna have a chance at it. And they started with Zeke because he's won it three times and he said, do you think it's going to be Zeke that wins it? And and I noticed right off the hop, Logan Hay had commented below, <laughs> I doubt it. So <laughs> to, see, to see him back that up was just awesome. It's great, man. Logan is, is uh, his char- he's one of the characters in Rodeo. He's such an animated guy. You can tell he's having fun everywhere he goes. He's a... Uh... He's good for the media. He always, always, like I said, he's always having fun out there. So it's it's funny to see him interacting on, on social media that way. And then yeah, putting his money where his mouth is and get and getting it done. And and he he put up a huge ride the long round, ninety points, and then hopped out and was ninety two and a half on Exotic Warrior, the Calgary Stampede in the short round. And and going ninety in the long go and the short go is no easy feat. And then doing it in front of your hometown crowd at an event where he has a hand in in, in producing it at this point. So hats off to Logan, man. That that's pretty awesome. And yeah, it's, it's something about that arena that just breeds big big time bronc rides. For sure, it's uh, it's one of those where again I, I watched that short round last night on the Cowboy Channel app, and I mean right from the get go, it it was it was salty. Mm-hmm. I mean, first ride of the night, and I, I wanted to make sure I, I give a shout out to Nicholas Patterson. I thought he had an amazing ride on Tokyo Bubbles there to start the short round. And again, to be the first guy out, I mean, you you kind of almost wonder if he he didn't get as much credit as was due. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, he's one of those guys that's really, he he's just kind of quietly progressed. And and I mean, to meet him, he's he is just a really quiet guy just a, a super super nice nice kid now i mean <laughs> grown up 
and uh, he's he's just really just piecing it together that little bit by little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, it's good. To, it's good to see, man. And you, you look at you look at even the the list of guys in the in the short round, like in the results. You got you got Logan Hay. You got I think it looked like Zeke made the short round. Lucas Mox is in there. Dawson Dom, Leighton Green, and and for a young guy having those those guys kind of right after you, it could be a bit of a daunting task. So like hats, yeah, like you say hats off to. Uh, to nicholas for for getting her done like that's a that's not an easy place to step up and, that, and that's what ends up making making like making you a champion and making you better is being able to compete against those guys and, and kind of show that you belong so it's pretty pretty awesome to see yeah for sure again he's just he, he's a kid that he he was just starting to ride bronx just kind of as i was was getting out of it and and just to see where he's come from then he's always been good and but it just, I mean, to step up on that stage in Wildwood and and not just make a ride, but he made a statement. It was it was a tremendous ride, and, and I just wanted to make sure, yeah, he got the yeah. credit for that on on top of Logan. I mean, Logan, yeah, that that ride on that exotic warrior. I mean, big rear out, hit hard, and then just go. And that horse is <laughs> is all there every day. That's one of the big big ones out of Tiger Warrior. That's mm-hmm. just. I'm going to play every day. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It was, it was, those first few jumps weren't easy and Logan weathered the storm and, and was able to again, walk away with the win. And, and that's, that's, I think you, it's like you pocketed over 9,000 um, towards both the Canadian and the PRCA standing. So that, that win's going to, going to have a big impact on Logan's year. And, and, and it's probably extra special to get it done on home soil. So um, congrats to Logan and, and congrats to, to Wildwood for bringing on another great event. And I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they're excited with how things panned out and, and we're excited to see what, what, what comes next year, but that's going to move us into Innisfil clay. We, another, it's kind of a, a monumental weekend in a sense for, for rodeo action. The, 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 obviously the big highlight coming out of Innisfil, Shea Beaver with her, the new Canadian record of 1.6 seconds of the breakaway roping. And it's kind of funny that this happens not long after we, we uh, interview her on the short round and, and, uh, and, and just hearing her talk and the way she approaches the game and her positive attitude, it's not surprising that, she was the one to break the record. Yeah, I, I well, I was kind of double dipping last night. I was actually watching the article on my computer or the the short round podcast with your interview with Shay last night while having the the Wildwood short go on my phone and <laughs> just listening. And <laughs> I should have probably went to bed, but it was it was good good entertainment. And I it, and and just yeah, how she talks about it doesn't matter where she's at. You're just you've got that same job every time. And, 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 you know, sometimes in that breakaway open, it's almost better. And and I think part of the reason why that run was so fast is some of the time when that rope comes around so tight around their neck, there's this much more Mm -hmm. that's got to get tight before it can break. Whereas that, that loop came on there. Perfect. There was no fouls or anything like that, but it was just around those shoulders that little bit more so it mm-hmm. snaps that little bit quicker and i think that really helped her but i mean she just nailed that start oh man got it on that calf and 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 yeah the announcers just shocked was like wait what what, what? just <laughs> yeah she had to like double make sure that there was no no barriers broken or anything and yeah it, yeah it, you know it, he was he was making sure for sure yeah. there well, and it's good. It's good, and you you not draw down here too that her traveling partner Kendall is also one point nine seconds. So that's one rodeo with two sub two second runs in in the breakaway roping, which is not not a usual occurrence, but not surprising given the talent we have up in Canada and just how that it, it seemed to be fast in this field. Like we saw it in the in the tie down roping too, where uh, Haven Medjid and Bo Cooper were seven point six seconds to win the rodeo there in a really st- stiff round of of tie down rope. And so it must've just been the way the score was set up in Innisfil and, and the, everybody was feeling it from the tie down ropers to the breakaway ropers. Yeah. And you know, it just, some of the time you're getting to where those calves have been to a couple of rodeos, maybe just the way the pens work and everything like that. So you maybe got a little more track record on things. Innisfil is always set up to be real quick mm-hmm. and, and a short score there and stuff. And, and then when you get lucky enough that the weather is nice enough that you're not fighting the elements <laughs> in his fail, then yeah, you're, you're rocking and rolling and, and everything. But yeah, you know, I, I wanted to think, mention something that Kendall had said in an interview there sometime last year about, uh, she just always tries to be where her feet are. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a line that I'm terrible for. It's, it's something that <laughs> when I got six things on the go, 
I, I sometimes remember that and try to think, okay, I got to try and, and do that. But I, I know those those two together, I think, do a, a lot of good for each other and are yeah. the top top competitors. Yeah, that, that's a that's a heavy hitting combo there in the in the rig when they, we talk about traveling partners. So good job to those gals. And Innisfil was a great rodeo, man. We had we had the, in the team rope win, the Graham brothers win again for the third time in two weeks. And then coming in close behind him was the reigning Canadian champions. Brady Shrine and Calgary Smith. So those, it was kind of cool to see the the team roping heavyweights battle it out uh, this past weekend. For sure. We had to give our plug. We said we're always going to have to copy and paste these guys. And sure <laughs> enough, here they are. Yeah, so far, they've, they've been living up to the hype so far. So we're in good shape. And, and then the rough stock side of things, uh, Lucas Mox has won another rodeo, splitting the win with Cole Ashback in the saddle bronc riding. And as you have written down here, he was he he probably shipped up and headed north to Innisville after the birth of his daughter. And, and it's, it's kind of funny the way that the timing worked out with that. We released the show not knowing how, if they had the last podcast, not knowing if they had, if they had, or had had their kid or not. But here we are, and, and Lucas is still up to his winning ways. So that was a good ride. I don't know if you saw the video play, but he, he made a good ride mm-hmm. on that North Star from C5 Rodeo. Yeah, for sure. Again, it's 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 hard to ever find a flaw in his rides. Again, that ride, his ride at Wildwood, I mean, again, it's just textbook and and you just can't beat it. I mean, Cole Ashbacker split it on that Shattered Lunatic as well and and it was it was a great ride also. They're just two two top hands that that definitely earned their keep there in Innisfail. And that that rodeo is such a cool one for those guys mm-hmm. to win. You, there's just again so much tradition i you know when we talked about it the other day i thought about it after and i was like oh, i forgot to mention denver danes tough <laughs> tough bronc rider i was listing them all yeah. off and I, I forgot about denver but but yeah they're just so so much tradition there i mean it's 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 tough without jack anymore mm-hmm. to, to think about that rodeo missing him I, he was he was such a, a big part of of all of that and rodeo in canada he was larger than life yeah, no, and it's good. And it's good to see the traditions carry on, and 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 the rodeo continued to be do well. Like looking at at the scene, the videos, the stands were full. The action was good, and 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 speaking of the action, uh, Nick Tetz had a huge weekend. I know we don't we haven't seen a lot of Nick uh, over the past year and a bit. He's been focusing more on the PBR side of things, but he he won two rodeos this weekend in Innisfil and in Stavely, and looks to be getting back to his winning ways, which is. A good thing for us in Canada and, and obviously a good thing for Nick. I think he's been having a bit of a tougher start to the season than he's used to. So well, and and Nick is traditionally rides really good end of June, into July. So watch out for Nick as we get into Pinocchio and, and all these big events coming up here over the next few months. He's a heck of a bull rider. <laughs> those Man, guys gotta be worried now for sure. I know he's one of those guys that just he's so talented and and when he heats up that he can really make some moves. So yeah, if you're kind of on the bubble in the top 12, you're gonna be watching watch behind your back for Nick coming up the way. And and finally, we're kind of wrapping up the Innisfil side of things. Clint Way Clint, Clint Lay wins again. He is 85 points on winning rows of C5s, and he uh yeah, he he's freaking Clint's getting back to it. He's he just moved into the number one spot in Canada and yeah, he's, he's going to be primed and ready to win a back-to-back Canadian title in, in Edmonton this fall. For sure. I'd actually <laughs> happened to run into him there last week in the drugstore in Provost here and was asking him how his weekend looked and, and he wasn't too sure about the rest of his draws. Innisfail was the only one he decided he wanted to go to. He was entered mm-hmm. in a few down South and, and again, he's, he's getting to that age where <laughs> making those drives all night, <laughs> Just don't always seem worth it if you're really not sure about things, but it's mm-hmm. always good when you you pick one, you go, you get on it, and you win. So it's hats off to him for that. Yeah, yeah. Clint's Clint's gonna be tough to beat. One of those guys that just is which time and time again he proves why he's one of the best in the country. And and that'll kind of move us into Stavely Clay. Our last rodeo of the weekend to recap. Uh, I think we'll stick with the bareback riding theme. Orrin Larson, he is back and won his third rodeo, Canadian rodeo of the year. He started to heat up. I know I saw him. He picked up some some checks down in the U.S. Um, Orin's one of those guys. When he's healthy, he's obviously one of the best in the world. And coming into Pinocchio and Cowboy Christmas, these big ones, I I, I can see Orin making some noise. He looks like he's back to to his old self and and ready to hit the road and hit the ground running. I guess you could say. For sure. I mean, he's he's been at this game a while. He knows every every place he's going. He he takes care of business. Just. He's on top of things. Him mm-hmm. and his brother Tyrell have just always 
I mean, they, they're two kids that come out of Manitoba and, and I mean, have gotten to the top of the, the rodeo game and, and it's, it's come from a lot of hard work and a lot of miles and, and a lot of learning and, and they're, they're just, yeah, this, this time of year is the perfect time to be stepping out and winning. And I'm, I'm sure he's going to have a busy schedule coming up mm-hmm. north and south of the border <laughs> here and getting her going. For sure. Yeah. It'll be, it'd be fun to follow along and see how he does here over the next few weeks. Uh, one cool thing I wanted to highlight was uh, Brody Beasley, 80, 84 points in this, in this junior steer riding. I mean, we've seen big scores in steer riding over the past like number of years. Um, Brody's one of those guys. He he kind of looks like a little mini bull rider out there when he's getting it done. He made some big rides in the CFR last year. And then seeing, I, got, I, I caught a quick glimpse of his ride from Staveley. So it's just good to see those, those young guys making those big score rides and, and that would place in a lot. I would win a lot of rodeos in the bull riding <laughs> that we've seen over the past year. So, so good on Brody for sticking it to him. And, and he'll, he'll be fun to watch as we move into, move into Edmonton in the fall here too. So yeah, man, it's, it was, it was a crazy weekend in Stavely. Uh, a couple more notes here on Stavely. We got Zeke Thurston winning again. We talked a bit about him last on, on the last episode of the short round, how he's kind of getting back to where he wants to be and kind of have his, has his sights set on Lucas Moxa in that number one position in Canada. But he's obviously got some ground to make up with Lucas still riding as good as he can, but watch out. Zeke's, like we say, Zeke's always a threat wherever he is. So yeah, good on him for picking up the win in Stavely. And finally, for the Stavely wrap up, we got Kyle Lucas in the tie down rope. And he, you haven't written down here, Clay, one third, one third in Innisfil, one tie down rope in Stavely, picked up 4,600 bucks. That goes a long way in the standings. Oh, for sure. I mean, again, Kyle, Kyle's one of those guys that, I mean, we've seen Bo Cooper break through and, and make it to the NFR. I, Kyle has been so close and, and he just roped so well. Again, Joe, his dad there, mm-hmm. Katie, his sister. I mean, they, th- those, that family, they, they know how to rope. That's, <laughs> that's something they've spent a lot of hours <laughs> doing and and everything, but it, it takes, it takes a lot of work to know how to win on both sides of the border and and Kyle, I think, yeah, he's, he's piecing it together here and his name's been popping up. He's been kind of one of those names that I've almost thought about throwing into some of our previous podcasts here Mm -hmm. because you see him in the results. He's, he's been winning and, and making money and, and he's just, yeah, he's well on his way here this year. And I would, I actually going back to Zeke there, I, I'd caught up with him there last week Mm because I did part of my article is, this next issue everybody look is <laughs> is going to be on some of the bronc rides that have happened and and the zeke in, invita- or zeke thurston invitational that'll be coming up the end of july and hmm. and and i mean zeke was willing to to reach out while he was on his way to help young guys getting on bronx at brooks and then headed to stably that night and everything and and again, as as much as Zeke might be trying to think he's got to keep pace with Lucas, uh, I know Zeke. He's a he's a guy that he's just worried about his own game. Mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. everybody else is worried about Zeke. Zeke's not worried about anybody. <laughs> no, but, no, and and I think that's that's just where he's at in in his career. It's there. He's he doesn't have to compare himself to anyone no. else. It's it's everybody trying to to figure out where they fit against him. So. Yeah, it's, be... it's it's fu- it's funny. I think I think Brett Gardner might have, might have coined this how all roads uh to a Canadian saddle bunk riding title or to a world saddle bunk riding title go through Zeke Thurston. And I don't and I think that he's probably the only one who doesn't even think about that. But it's it's just funny how that rings true. Just every time he sees Zeke, he, he is the the true epitome of a champion. So it's it's good to good to have him representing the sport for us up here in Canada. Um, all right, Clay, that kind of wraps up the. Uh, the rodeo recap from last weekend there's a lot of lot going on there i'm, I'm glad you came up with this idea because this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna save us some time on the next next few shows here but um as we head into this coming weekend we got uh wainwright sundry high river and best basano on the schedule so we got two sms tour rodeos and in wainwright and sundry and then a couple of other rodeos are, are any of these on the precision the precision tour is is basano on the precision tour am i I think it is. There? Yes. Oh, yeah. So we, yes. Got, so we got the sound part of the new precision uh, well servicing tour. So that's kind of cool to have that element in there. Um, I know we kind of talked about this when we sort of started recording, but let's let's get into some people to watch as we head in, in, into next weekend. Starting with Wainwright, that's the one we were we were talking about. So rock and roll. 
Yeah. So again, I, I was trying to look through things there again, you've got some good horses, some good matchups there in the Bronc ride. And I think Carter Sandberg's got Pedro and, and uh, you see horses like Elvira and, and horses of bulls that are, they're in there. And, mm -hmm. and we see a few of Northcott Ewell's. I mean, there's, there's some tough ones there, but I think the, the big one I noticed was in the bareback ride and going back to, to our season leader at the moment, Clint Lay, he's, he's got a rematch with true grit. Remember he won around there at the CFR mm -hmm. on true grit, mm -hmm. made an outstanding ride. And I, and I think that had even been the first time he'd ever gotten on the horse, which mm -hmm. I mean, they've both been around and sometimes that's, that's the way you draw it is, is you just draw around the horse until that moment. But I, I can see that without a short go this year, again, those horses normally would be saved for, for the Sunday night, but I, you know, I think for the rough stock guys, only having that one head is going to be to where it actually pays better to mm -hmm. win it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I know in talking with with some people in the in, about it when when the decision was made to to not have the short go or or forced upon them that for the rough stock guys, it it will likely be to their benefit, especially with four rodeos on this weekend. Yeah. Trying to get <laughs> yeah. back for Sunday night, there is it's always it's, tough. Uh, it's a lot, so. But I think uh, seeing Sam Kelts, that special smoke, uh, a Northcott Ewells, mm -hmm. I think uh, the Saturday afternoon, that'll be a good one. And and uh, yeah, I mean, again, there's we were talking about that Sunday night or Saturday night performance under the light starting at 9 p.m. There's there's going to be some action that happens there. It's it's always a cool show and there'll be lots to to watch on there. So. Yeah, well, and I think both Wainwright and Sundry will be on the Cowboy Channel, so you can keep up to date with what's going on. Um, a couple of things to to know heading into Sundry, we got a lot of good, like best people in the world across the board in all events kind of coming up. We got we got Kate Bruno on the saddle bronc riding. You got Rocker Steiner is going to be in Sundry on Saturday. Tough Cooper, Blair Burke, Coda Eldridge. It's it's across the board. You got you're going to have some great rodeo action to keep up to date with, and and that's not to leave out High River and Sundry or High River and Bassano. We 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 got we can do this together quickly. We haven't had a chance to go through all the draws yet, but um, it's going to be an outstanding uh weekend of rodeo in Canada, and and yeah, we'll we'll be sure to keep you up to date up to date with everything on the the new Pro Rodeo Canada website, and as well as you can follow along the Cowboy Channel with Wainwright and Sundry. I'm sure, but if I'm wrong, anybody can call me out on that. I don't mind, but. <laughs> well play this has been really fun uh the first uh edition of the the half point or the short round half point i guess we'll call it so episode 15.5 so it, it was good to catch up and, and talk a bit about mm. some rodeo results and current events and and i guess one last thing before we hop off to um so i want to shout out all the rodeo committees and associations that have with their coverage of the events it's been so easy to, to stay up to date i know we've we post the in, in progress results and stuff, but that usually doesn't have, that usually doesn't tell the whole story. So everybody's been really active on their social media platforms and doing a good job kind of putting stuff out there for people to follow along. So I just wanted to tip my hat from a from a social media lens to the to all the rodeo committees lately for uh getting doing awesome work and keeping everybody up to date. So, anyways, Clay, I think that's gonna do it for the first ever half or short round half point. Man, I'm gonna have to figure out that get, get that dialed in my head, but. Thanks for the time today, buddy, and and we'll uh, we'll catch up in about a week in, in for episode sixteen of of the short round. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll catch up soon. And again, thanks everybody for listening. And this has been the short round half point. I'm your host, Wacy Anderson, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.